So guys, I have nearly 25,000 subscribers on YouTube, which I'm so grateful. Any one of you that have subscribed and watched my videos throughout the years or even the past few months, just thank you. I want to say that. With that being said, a lot of you have asked me in the comments, like asking me specific questions on how I make my videos. You know, either it's about my camera, my microphone, my lighting, how I edit them, just anything. So I thought this video would be cool to make. I'm gonna make a super in-depth video on how I make my videos. This is gonna start from the very beginning, how I film, how I edit, everything in between. It's gonna be pretty detailed. Like I'm gonna assume you know literally nothing. Like I'm gonna pretend I'm teaching my grandma and hopefully you learn some tricks along the way. Hopefully you do use this for your YouTube channel or you use it as inspiration to actually start a YouTube channel. Also, as I'm talking through my video, keep in mind all the gear that I'm using. Don't think that you need to use that from the beginning. Start with what you have. Start with a cell phone. Cell phone cameras are really good. Just combine it with a tripod and some lighting and you're good to go. You can start a YouTube channel. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make like a fake video just for the purposes of showing you how I make a video. <laughs> so what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing a fake review of this soda. So it's like honestly my favorite soda right now and I'm just gonna do a fake review, show you how I film like the A roll and the B roll and I'll explain what all that means if you don't know, if you don't know what that means as well. Through this whole process, if I'm not filming with this camera, my Canon 80D, I'm going to be filming with my Nikon D5500. Yes, this is the one I actually dropped in my bathtub, but it works decently enough for something like this. Okay, so I'm going to take you off my Canon and we're going to go to the Nikon. Okay guys, so literally the first thing you have to do before filming a video, you have to turn all your lights on. So I have two umbrella lights. I have an overhead light. And I also have another lamp right here. I also have some accent lighting, these little JJ's, and I also have a light hiding back here. So that's just a lamp that will light up the back of my computer monitor. Lighting is a big part of YouTube in addition to your camera like you see right there. So once you have the lighting up, you know how to do the settings in your camera. Okay, so I'm gonna show you all the settings I do on my camera before I even get started. So I have all the lights on. This is basically where I'm gonna be sitting when I'm filming, so all the light and all the settings for there are good. As of right now, I what I do, I hold down the shutter button halfway, and that shows me my exposure. And when you look at the exposure meter, you wanna be really close right to the middle. That means the shot's perfectly exposed. Um, now that's the camera reading it. You can use your eye. Sometimes I like to do it a little bit to the right instead to make it a little bit brighter. That's up to you and what you want to do. But let me explain to you what everything means because you have to have your camera in manual mode. So take a look. Before you change any settings, your camera has to be in manual mode. So you just take this wheel and you do this. So you just move it to the M. That's where you want it to be. Okay, now once you're in manual mode, you can change a lot of stuff. I'm gonna just show you what I do. Um, some YouTubers will do like color grading and stuff like that. I don't really do that. I'll show you what I do. You can learn from that. You can expand from that, do whatever. So when you're shooting in manual, there's three things that you have to keep in mind. We have right here the shutter speed. We have right here the f-stop and that is the ISO. So the shutter speed, this one's easy. So we're shooting in 30 frames per second at 1080p. So we're gonna do the shutter speed as double. So we're doing it at 60. That's the easiest factor. You always leave it at 60. You never really wanna change it for the most part. Now the next number is the f-stop. So the f-stop basically means how much light the camera can let in. So as of right now, it's at f2.8 because that's the lower, lowest that this lens will go. So if I click this, I can make the f-stop higher, but you can see what that does. It makes the picture darker. 
Also what f-stop does, the higher it is, the less blur. So for example, if I put this in front of here, I have the f-stop at 2.8. You can see the background is really blurry. If I change the f-stop to like f11, I'm gonna have to raise the ISO. I'll explain that too. But when it's F11 or F10, the background isn't as blurry as all. So you just wanna keep that in mind, what you're trying to do with your shot. There's certain shots where you want your F-stop to be really high because you wanna get the full picture in the picture, but then there's times where you want that really good bokeh. So you have to do the F-stop lower. So now that I have F-stop for you and you understand that, I have to explain to you what ISO means. Now ISO is what ties all of this stuff together. It says that the shot is basically exposed perfectly. So if I raise the ISO, it will make the image brighter. But then when you do this and check the exposure, you can see the shot is overexposed. So you don't wanna do that. So you wanna use the ISO to your favor to make this shot as exposed as possible. So what you need to remember is that ISO, f-stop, and shutter speed all play a role in getting your shot. Like I said, if I wanna raise this all the way to f22, it makes the shot so dark, so I have to up the ISO. And to get to anything that looks decent, I have to do ISO 12,800. But keep in mind, the higher the ISO, the more noise you're gonna see. So if you want a crispy, really good shot, you need to shoot for ISO as low as possible. And ultimately to do that, you need a lot of light or a lens that can shoot at a low f-stop. And you can see the lower f-stop makes the shot really bright, so I need to bring the ISO back down. Also keep in mind, a lot of uh, lenses that come with your camera, the f-stop will not go this low. So f2.8 is pretty low, and then I even have another lens that goes to f1.8. If you have a kit lens, they go t from like, typically to about 5.6. So that's not really good. So if we take it to 5.6, in my current lighting situation, I'd have to up the f-stop. And I don't wanna have an ISO that high because it will start to create a little bit of noise. So basically right now, let's change it back to F2.8 and let's do the ISO about 160. That's a pretty good exposed shot. I have to set the white balance of the camera with this. So this is a white balance card and what you have to do, first you wanna make sure that your camera is set for proper white balance and custom white balance. So what you have to do first is make sure that your camera is set on custom white balance. So for Canon cameras, I can just click here and here's my white balance info. And right now we're on custom white balance, but just for example, if we're on auto white balance, look how much different the shot turned out and I'll record that for just a second and I'll put it over this shot so you can see it. So this is with auto white balance on, but I don't like to do an auto white balance. I like to do custom white balance. So I'm gonna change it back to here. And what I first need to do is take a picture of this. So I'm gonna switch my camera back to photo mode up there and then if I hit this start stop button, I can enter into live mode. So what I'm gonna do is take a photo of the white balance card, approximately where my head's gonna be. You don't wanna do it too close because the lighting could be different right here. You wanna make sure the lighting is in the same spot where your subject is. So I just do this. I can use the touch screen to take the picture. There's the white balance. Now I go into the menu, go to custom white balance, which is right here. Tap it. It remembers the last shot I took. It's set. Okay. 
I'm going to switch back to video mode. And now we're set. So we have ISO set, the custom white balance is set as we can tell right there. And let me just record a few seconds for you right now so you can see that as well. Okay, so since we're using an external mic, which you need to do if you're doing YouTube videos, because the mic on the, the DSLR sounds really bad. So we, what we want to do is wherever on your camera, find sound recording. And we want to have it on manual. Because if we do it on auto, the levels are done really weird. You'll, you'll hear like hissing and stuff. So do manual. And you basically want to bring the level down, kind of. You basically want to play with it. So if it's up too high, it will pick up more noise, but it'll also pick up more sound and more hiss. So just play around with it and look for the decibels. So you'll see something right here. Um, if it's just white noise, this shouldn't be moving at all because you don't want it to pick up anything. So let me unplug this. So right now it's picking up the sound from the microphone on the camera. And when I'm not talking, there's nothing there. So that's what you want. So let's put it up higher just so you can see. So like right now, it's picking up stuff when I'm not even talking. And when I'm talking, it's peaking. You can see the red. That means that's too high. But anyway, I found that on my videos, here works just fine. Okay, now, so now that I'm ready to shoot, I have the camera flipped out the screen so I can see what I'm doing. And one of the reasons that I shoot with this lens, this is the 24 millimeter f2.8. So the f2.8 lets in a decent amount of light, but then also the 24 millimeter is wide enough so I can sit closer to the camera. So if you didn't know, 24 millimeter, that means that it's more zoomed out than a higher number. So this is my, what we call a nifty 50 because it's 50 millimeters. This is 50 millimeters f1.8. And if you remember like before, f1.8 would let in more light, it would produce a better picture. But since it's 50 millimeters, it would be so zoomed into my face, it wouldn't really look good in this small space. So this lens is really good for B-roll. I'll show you that later. And if I haven't explained that, A-roll and B-roll, A-roll is where you're shooting your face, which I'm about to do right now. And then B-roll is where you shoot your product that you're talking about that you edit into it. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So what I'm going to do now is plug in my microphone into my Canon DSLR. This is the camera that I'm going to be shooting with now. Okay, so you can see what I see. You can see the Canon 80D is tracking my head. I see the little square because I have the autofocus on. That's really good for when you're shooting A-roll, which is talking to the camera. Basically, that means that you don't have to worry about it because it's focused on your head. If your camera doesn't support that, you're gonna to have to do manual focus. Okay guys, we're back to the normal picture, the normal camera, the Canon 80D. Here is the D5500 that I was filming with before. I have to say, I have no idea why I shot with an icon before. Canon is just so much easier to, to shoot video with. The autofocus is really good. There is Sony and Panasonic, but I'm convinced that the autofocus and just everything about the ADD is really good for me. It's really easy to use. Anyway, so now let's pretend we're going to be shooting the video for our product that we're going to put on YouTube. So what we want to do first, make sure everything's set up. Like I have my microphone, it's plugged into its extender. The extender cable is plugged into the Canon ADD. Okay, so now that we're recording, I mean, <laughs> this is like really in depth, but I always make sure my hair's like not really messed up or anything. I try to brush my teeth before, so I literally like will do this and make sure nothing's in my teeth. That's kind of like too much information, but hey, you never know. 
And if you do brush your teeth, make sure there's like no uh, toothpaste around your mouth. Make sure there's nothing in your teeth. Make sure you floss because people will point that stuff out. And keep in mind, I wouldn't advise you to make a video like this because it probably won't get too many views. You want to think about a video that is going to catch people's eyes. They're going to click on it. You need to make a good title and a good thumbnail. But I'll show you that too. So guys, I just want to share with you my favorite soda of all time right now. It's called 1893 and it's made by Pepsi. And this version is called Ginger Cola. It gets my big thumbs up approval. And if you want to see more soda videos like this, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my, to my channel, and I'll see you later. Bye. There you go. Not perfect, but that's kind of how I do my thing. Um, so that's the A-roll that we shot. We introduced what we're going to talk about. I said why I liked it. And yeah. So what we need to do to make this video more interesting, we need to shoot some B-roll. So B-roll, like I said, is what you put over the A-roll when you're talking to fill up space. And you, you can even use the B-roll to fill up mistakes. So like when I was looking at the can and reading it, I could replace that with B-roll of the can itself so it looks more professional. So let's do that now. So guys, that's the can we're going to shoot. And there's my camera. But if you notice, we need to get the camera down a little bit to a more... Uh, even level with the soda. So I haven't really introduced you yet, but this is my man Frodo tripod. It's a really good tripod. It holds a lot of weight and it holds this fluid head right here. So if you don't know what a fluid head is, let me explain that first. So basically the tripod right here, it comes by itself. Like that's when you purchase it, you get this. You can't even put a camera on it. So you have to buy this fluid head, which what that does it allows you to make really smooth pans like this. So you can see when I move this, it's really smooth. That's what a fluid head does. And you can also adjust the settings to make it go up and down as well. And you can even adjust the drag like this. So it's really smooth or like actually too smooth. So typically you wanna like tighten up the drag a little bit and if you ever want to lock like so see how this can move up and down we can actually lock that so now it can't move up and down and it can only move side to side and we can even lock the side by side so now I can't move at all but anyway what we need to do is get the camera down to be level with the can so on my legs I have little releases and I'm just getting it down. Okay, and the camera is shooting forward and it still needs to be adjusted just a little bit. And now it's too low, <laughs> but we can raise the camera too easily. And actually I need to pull it back a little bit. Okay, so you can see the shot is framed perfectly. So now I'm going to record by hitting here. So if we wanna do something crafty, we can now do this. And I can adjust the tension. And that's how you get like a smooth painting shot. And what I would advise you to do is to do a few. Because some of them aren't going to look too good. Like you can literally just go back and forth all day if you want to. Pay attention to any jerks or anything like that. You can even like play around with how close it is to the camera, stuff like that. And we can even do like an up and down shot. So if I do this, I can even let the gravity kind of do the work for me. The key is just to be really gentle. So there you go, that's how you get a smooth shot. So here is my F 1.8. So let's put that on and see how that affects everything. 
So make note of how close the can is to the camera. So I'm going to take off the 24 millimeter and put on the 50 millimeter. 50 millimeter is going to make it so much closer. Look at that. Like it won't even focus this close. So I have to back it up. Okay, and also remember we're shooting with f1.8 lens so we can actually do f1.8 and we can drop the ISO down to 100 because we have enough light. So that would be the ultimate scenario. We have the best light. It's exposed well. Let's hit record and now we can create even a better shot. Just keep in mind with f1.8, it may not be fully sharp around the whole can because f1.8 makes the depth of field very blurry. So the sides of the can may not be perfectly sharp. So like with this shot, let's do something different. Let's take advantage of the ADD's autofocus. So right now it's focused on the can. Let's take it off. So it's focused on the back now. So now let's put the can back on to make a more dramatic focus. And then you can even tap the focus. So let's do this. The camera is focused on the J's. We're sliding over to the can and we're going to tap on the can as we're sliding. So that'd be a pretty cool shot too. So what we want to do ultimately is find enough shots that go with the A roll. So if you remember I talked about the ingredients and stuff too. So let's get a shot of like the can showing the ingredients and the name. So let me show that right there in the label as well. So we're getting all that B-roll. So that should be good. Okay guys, so now what I do, I take the memory card that I use to shoot the A-roll in the B-roll. I put it in my reader. It pops up on my computer. And I just go into the memory card and I find everything that I recorded. Now if you keep the thumbnails big, as you can see, um, then it's easy to find. So I can tell where I shot my white balance. So typically the video is right after that. So you just get all the video. And I just cut it off the card because I won't need it afterwards. Make a folder. Title it something, so we'll do Pepsi. Doesn't need to be anything exact. So guys, it is currently copying right now from my SD card to the computer from the footage that I shot with the Canon ADD. Now this is it's hurting my mind because I'm shooting with both cameras and I'm trying to figure out what to edit, <laughs> how I'm gonna do this into one video, but it's pretty common sense, obviously. So it's copying right now, and I'm gonna show you how I edit my videos as well. So what I need to do, I need to pull up my video editor, which I use Adobe Premiere Elements 14. So don't be shocked. A lot of people use Adobe Premiere Pro or um, Final Cut Pro. I just use Premiere Elements 14 because it's simple. And while all this is copying and Premiere is loading, let me show you what I actually edit my videos with. It's an Alienware Alpha PC, so it's nothing special. It was like $400. It's got like a Core i3 processor. I have an external hard drive on top of it. It's got like eight gigs of memory, so it's nothing special. So don't think you need like the latest and greatest computer to edit videos, especially if they're pretty simple. Okay, so we're gonna load Premiere, and I have a template that has my intro and everything all ready to go, so that makes it super easy. Okay, so you can see it added my template. So it's just my intro, which I'm sure you've all heard before. So this is my intro, which I've already gotten this made. and I've made this before, so this is already done. I don't have to mess with this every time. So what we want to do is go to Add Media and Get Projects and Files. And we want to go to the Pepsi folder and incorporate all of this. So that's all adding right now. That should take just a second. And then once that's done adding, I'll see a thing at the bottom where 
the audio is being rendered or something. So that just takes a little bit as well. When you have a slower computer like me, you tend to just learn to be patient. <laughs> it works, but I can't wait to get a new one whenever I'm able to. And while we're at it, I like to increase the audio just a little bit. You can kind of tell the audio levels by looking at it. So I go into clip and do audio gain. So let's, for example, do 25 decibels. You can see it basically is too high. It's going to sound really bad. Just show you what I see. You can kind of hear that it sounded really muffly and it just clipped. So I like to do like eight decibels. And typically that's good. If I listen to it, you can see what I see. You can see the Canon 80D. And it sounds pretty good. It's scratching my head. I see a little square. Um, but this part isn't the video. This is the video of me making this video for you. So let me find where we started talking. Okay, so right here I found where I started talking. So guys, I just want to share with you my favorite soda of all time. Like so what we're going to do is cut it. So I can make this and cut that. And now I just delete this. And now it takes us to the important stuff. So now let's watch it to make sure it sounds okay. What we want to do now, now that we have the A roll, is edit the B roll in. So let's see where it would fit good. Okay, so I said 1893. So that might be a good time to show the initial shot of, of a can or something like that. So let me just do this. So this is all my footage I got. If I just drag this on top and do place on top, here it is. And what you want to do is delete the audio from the B-roll so you don't hear it. There's the shot right there. Okay, I said premium cola spice with real ginger. So let's see if we can find a shot that would kind of go with that, which basically means anything from the front of the can. So let's just place another clip and this was a lot of B-roll, so we need to really edit this down. But we can find anything, which I mean, even this would make a good B-roll shot. So look. Okay, so here's the shot I remember shooting. So we're going to clip this, delete the other two pieces, and we're going to put it here. And then we're going to edit this clip. So it says it's premium cola spice with real ginger which is honestly one of my favorite things that I didn't even know existed. So there you go. So that goes on top of there. Let's keep going. Okay, so I'm talking about the real sugar now. So this would be a great time to find where I do a shot of the ingredients. So you can kind of just like scrub through your shots and see where you did it. So there I'm showing the ingredients towards the end of the video. So I know I need to drag this in, place on top, delete the audio, find the shot of mentioning the sugar, go back. Let's see if I can find it. There's corn syrup, which is a plus. So here it was. Actual real sugar. So now I'm gonna drag this clip over and now we can see where I'm talking about. And now we can just cut the rest of that out. Okay, so that's basically it. I have my intro, I have my A roll, I have my B roll over it. And I think we're ready to go. We're ready to export the video. So what we're gonna do is click export and share. This is gonna be a little bit different depending on what software you're using. I just hit devices. And since I'm doing 1080p, I do 1080p. I just do it in the medium quality because if you do high, it makes the file pretty big. So medium quality. And I just change the file name to whatever I want to. So Pepsi. I'll do like ginger cola Pepsi. And now it's going to take a few minutes to uh, export and everything and then we'll get it on YouTube and I'll show you how that works as well okay so now we're ready to upload the video we're on YouTube on the upload page we're gonna click here and I'm gonna go to where I saved the video of course so now it's uploading 
So now you think at this point that you can just relax and everything's good to go. But no, this is where something equally as important happens than when you made the video. This is how people are going to find your video. So the title defaults on your file name, but you want to change that. And when you're doing the title and the description and everything, think of what would attract you to click it. So we're reviewing Pepsi Ginger Cola, but how many people are going to be actually searching for that? So let's do something like the best soda in the world. And do like an exclamation point and a question mark. And then also I'll do this like, or I can do, we can do this 1893 ginger cola review. And Pepsi's in there too, but we don't want to make the title too long and we can use the tags to take care of that too. So the description will say something like, in today's video I review or I talk about my favorite soda. It is called 1893 Ginger Cola and it's made by Pepsi. So now we have Pepsi in the description so people will be searching for that, they'll find it. And then you could do something like this watch my other video here and here link to another related video because if people click this eventually related videos are going to populate next to it and your videos will feed off each other and tags is another important thing so think about what people would be searching for so um, we could do world's best soda pepsi soda um, pepsi1893 Ginger Cola, Ginger Cola, Soda with Sugar instead of Corn Syrup, stuff like that. Okay, my Nikon camera died, so now I'm shooting back with my Canon 80D, which I should have been shooting with anyway. Okay, but what I was saying, use the search bar to find more tags. So let's type in Pepsi Ginger Cola. So not much there. So let's do ginger cola. There's ginger lemon cola, which I mean, that isn't very helpful. Um, let's type in 1893. So here we go. Here's a few helpful things. Um, 1893, 1893 Pepsi review. So we can do that as a tag. 1893 Pepsi review. That just means more people are searching for it. Uh, let's do best soda. See, best soda ever. So that's another uh, tag, so best soda ever. The processing is all done, it's ready to be uploaded. Um, so the thumbnail, the recommended thumbnails all suck. So we have to make a custom one. So what I do, um, I either shoot one or I go back into the video. So I just go back into, like I look at my B-roll and stuff like that. So let's open up one of these videos in VLC player. And VLC player will allow me to make a screenshot. So here we go, like this is a pretty good, you can kind of look through your clips really quick, but you want something that's like pretty up close so people can see it. So we'll do this, we'll do video and then take snapshot. And that goes into my pictures and we can make that the thumbnail. So we're gonna do custom thumbnail, go to my pictures, and you have to make sure the thumbnail is less than two megabytes or it won't upload. And literally at this point, we're ready to publish it. <laughs> I'm not gonna put this video on my channel, so I'm going to exit out, but there you go. It will be ready to be live. So there you go, guys. That is how I made my video, or make my videos from start to finish. Obviously I don't use, obviously I don't review a soda, but that's up to you. You know, you have to decide what you want to make, what's going to catch people's attention, what's going to combine a great title, description, thumbnail, and attract them in, and then your actual video keeps them there. 
because all of those things together is what allows YouTube to judge your channel and give it more views. If your videos are being clicked on a lot, that's great but they need to have good watch time. YouTube judges your channels based on watch time. So if you have a 10 minute video and someone watches 30 seconds and clicks off, that is bad. You want people to watch all 10 minutes. That's how your video is gonna get more views, gonna show up in recommended, gonna show up on the homepage. It's gonna how you're gonna get subscribers and more views overall. So just remember that you may be able to you know, make a decent video, but you have to be able to attract people and keep them in to ultimately get more views. So hopefully today, what I showed you on how to make videos was helpful. If it was, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And also be sure to check out my other video where I actually disclose how much money I made in 2016. So I got really secretive and personal right now showing you how I make my videos, but I'm being even more personal and secretive showing you how much I made on YouTube of this year. So definitely check out that video. I'll put a link in the description below. Other than that, guys, have a great night. I'll see you later. Bye.